exercise set 1.3 systems of linear equations two variable manual solution using one graphic approximation and two an algebraic method encountering all types of solution sets if you did exercise set 1.1 you notice the difference is here in that this this exercise set will encounter all types of solution sets and exercise set 1.1 the solution sets are, are always consisted of a single point solution. The instructions uh, for 1 through 10 for each system A, is the system linear? Two variables? If not, state this and explain the reason. If so, proceed to answer parts B, C, and D below. Part B, provide a graphic approximation of the solution to the system. Be sure your graph meets the quality standards of our class. C. Provide an algebraic solution of the system. This solution will be exact. D. Assess the correctness of your solution. Exercise 1. Taking a look at this system, this uh, first equation, it's already in the form ax plus by equals c. It's linear. The second equation, already in the form ax plus by equals c. That's linear also. Okay. Part A. Yes. This system of equations is linear two variable. All right, and that makes us uh, responsible for part B. Uh, some solving. First of all, there is uh, some uh, graphing, graphic approximation involved here. Let's see. To uh, graph each of these equations individually, let's see what kind of coordinate system would be needed. Uh, checking for intercepts, say, just roughly. Letting x be 0 in the first equation, y would be negative 10 thirds. Okay, about negative 3.3. If we let y be 0, we would have x equal to 2. Okay, make a note of that. In the second equation, if we were to let y be 0, 10x is 15, x becomes 15 over 10, 3 halves, 1.5. Alright, let x be 0, y would be negative 15 over 6. Okay, so let's see, that would be uh, negative 5 over 2, negative 2.5. All right, looks like we can have a pretty simple uh, x going from negative 5 to positive 5, y going from negative 5 to positive 5 coordinate system, and everything apparently will fit pretty nicely. So we'll try that. Labeling the axes, this will be x, this will be y. Let's scale the axes. It'll be one unit per tick mark, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 5, y-axis, same, one unit per tick mark, 1, 2, 3, okay, 4, 1, negative 4. All right, now. I'll get it out with a contrasting color so that the graph of this first equation, or more formally, the graph of the solutions of this first equation, stand out from the coordinate system in the background. Now I'll be uh, a little more careful with these intercepts and actually graph them. Letting x be 0, we had y to be negative 10 thirds, negative 3.3, about there. Letting y be 0, x is 2. With a ruler, the straight line. B, 
part of good communication would be to tell the reader what is this red line here so we label it with its equation this is the solutions of 5x minus 3y equals 10 okay ready to go to that second equation there another contrasting color to make this graph be distinct from everything else blue and let's uh, maybe pick up some intercepts here let x be 0 y would be negative 15 over 6 which is the uh, negative 5 halves negative 2.5 there if we let y be 0 x is 15 over 10 that's 3 over 2 1.5 Okay, about there. Connect these two points with a straight line. The reader wants to know what is this blue line here? Label it with its equation. 10x minus 6y equals 15. Okay, now most importantly, the reason we're doing all this is to get a graphic approximation for the solution of the system. So now we're seeking the intersection of all the graphs of uh, the system and it looks like uh, we have a couple of lines that are distinct and parallel. Well, that means there is no inter points of intersection here. So we are going to eventually then, then conclude that there appear to be no solutions to this system. Okay, let's write this down. First, we could, as a little extra, point out that uh, it appears we have a pair of distinct parallel lines and so uh, we, it appears there are no solutions to this system. And this is the uh, actual conclusion that answers the question. So here's what will get the prominent cloud. So at least graphically, there's where we're at. Appears to, there appear to be no solutions to the system. Okay, let's go to part C, the algebraic solution. Okay, why don't we rewrite the system right here? first equation is 5x minus 3y equals 10. Second equation is 10x minus 6y equals 15. This looks well suited for some elimination. I think we can take the second equation and subtract 2 of the first from it because of the 10x and the 5x available here. Alright, let's see what happens. So 10x minus 2 of these, that's 0. Negative 6y, subtract 2 times negative 3y, that means negative 6y plus 6y, that's 0. Hmm. Over here, 15 minus 2 times 10, 15 minus 20, that's negative 5. Okay, look at this. 0 equaling negative 5, no matter what we choose for any x-y pair, we are never going to be able to make this be true. Okay, under these circumstances, when you combine two equations and you arrive at something that can never be true, regardless of what you choose for x and y, you have a situation of no solutions. There are no solutions to this system. Okay, and a 
prominent cloud around that conclusion. All right, checking things over, assessing the correctness of all this, what have we got? Well, we have the idea that uh, both our graphic solution graphic approximation, we could say, and the algebraic solution had conclusions of no solutions Thus, overall consistency. Is achieved. And with that being the case, we can feel pretty confident that this is correct. Okay. Exercise two. Let's take a look at the system and decide whether or not it's linear two variables part A. This first equation, hmm, problem right here, 3 divided by x. Now you can't have that in an equation and have it be linear. Now sometimes uh, an algebraic manipulation can recover the situation and have it be linear after all. So maybe we just take a, a, a little effort here and maybe multiply both sides by x. See if this will Rescue us. Okay, this equation now would look like, let's see, 3 and plus xy over 5 equaling 2x. Now what do we think? Well, although we cleared up that divide by x situation, we created a new problem, which is right here. Now we have this cross product term, x times y. That's not linear either. Okay, looks like we're ready to make a conclusion about the situation here in this exercise. All right, so to part A, it's going to be no. This system is nonlinear. How about that reason? Going back to the original first equation, there is a 3 divided by x term in that first equation is basically the problem. So there is a 3 divided by x term in the first equation. Okay, and then we are not responsible for any solution of this system since here in this unit one, we are only solving linear systems. Okay, that's it for exercise two. Exercise number three. All right, as far as this system goes, uh, the first equation is in the form x plus by equals c. It's linear. The second equation it's in the form ax plus by equals c. It's linear as well. All right, we can answer part a. Yes, this system is linear to variable. Okay, now that makes us responsible for solving the system. First, graphically, graphic approximation, part B. Preparing to graph the solutions of each individual equations. Uh, let's see, let's look at the intercepts here. In the first one, if y is 0, uh, 2x is 6, x is 3. Okay, let x be 0. Negative 3y equals 6, y would equal negative 2. In the second equation, let y be 0. 
6x is 18, x is 3, let x be 0, negative 9, y is 18, y is negative 2, okay. These are all pretty small numbers. It looks like a simple coordinate system with an x-axis going from negative 5 to positive 5 and a y-axis going from negative 5 to positive 5 will be sufficient. Labeling the axes, x here, y for the vertical axis. Scaling the axes, going one unit per tick mark. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, negative four, negative four. All right, now let's get a, a contrasting color to graph the solutions of this first equation. Back up here, this time. Um, we actually graph these intercepts. All right, if x is 0, y would be negative 2. There. Let's let y be 0. x would equal 3. OK, straight line to connect these two points. And uh, part of communicating would be to clearly state what is this red line, the graph of. All right, the graph of the solutions to 2x minus 3y equals 6. OK. Now let's get another contrasting color and graph the solutions to the second equation of the system. How about those intercepts? Let's let x be 0. Looks like y would be negative 2. Hmm. Okay, let's let y be 0. 6x is 18, so x would be 3. Huh. Look at that. All right, we uh, are going to connect these two points with a curve. Now it is actually a coincident, but to make sure that I, I'd like to try to at least show both red and blue, so I, I try for just a very slight offset here. Okay, there, and what is this blue line, the graph of? It's the graph of the solutions. 6x minus 9y equals 18. Okay, now, the point of this graph that we have here is to approximate the solutions to the system. Well, the solutions to the system are all the points of intersection. Now, we seem to have these two coincident lines. We seem to have all these points here as being solutions to the system. Okay, let's write down uh, what we are noticing here. Um, although we don't have to say this, we could at least make an observation appears that the lines are coincident. Means one lies directly on top of the other. Now, this doesn't answer the question yet because we're supposed to talk about solutions to the system. So, we can say this implies that it appears any solution to, and we can choose either of the equations here, let's pick I guess the one here up top with the 2x in it, 2x minus 3y equals 6 is a solution to 
the system. All right, now this is our graphic conclusion. So let's get a prominent cloud around the conclusive statement of the question. And now let's go and try out this uh, system algebraically, see what happens. Okay, for part C, we could rewrite the system right here to prepare to solve it algebraically. Okay, with the uh, 2x and 6x sitting here, it's uh, a good opportunity for some elimination. The strategy can be take the second equation and subtract three of the first equation from it, roughly speaking. So this will give us 6x minus 3 times 2x, 0. Now, negative 9y, subtract 3 times negative 3y. Uh, that's negative 9y plus 9y, which is 0. Hmm. Okay, on the right-hand side, we would have to have 18 minus 3 times 6, which is 18 minus 18, that's 0. Look at this, 0 equals 0. That's true regardless of what x and y are for values. Okay, what have we got here? Okay, as when you have a system of two equations and you algebraically uh, combine them to arrive at something which is always true, like 0 equals 0, or 2 equals 2, or negative 3 equals negative 3, the uh, conclusion becomes that the equations are equivalent. That's one thing you can say. We don't say equations are equal. You know, numbers can equal each other and these sort of things, but e an equation is a statement of equality. So although we don't say equations are equal, we can say that they are equivalent. That means they have the same solution set. All right, that's one thing we can say. Here's another way to uh, uh, say what we've got here. We can say the equations are linearly dependent. Okay. Now, this is something that uh, will make a, a little more sense when we study three variable systems and four variable systems and this kind of thing. But basically, it's saying in this case that one equation is a constant multiple of the other, roughly speaking. All right. So although we have said a, a couple things here, um, we haven't answered the question yet. The question is actually to state the solution set. Okay. Well, having arrived at something such as 0 equals 0 in our algebra. This means that really one of the equations, or rather any ordered pair x, y, satisfy one of the equations satisfies the entire system. In other words, these two equations are really uh, have the same solution set as we said here in this first line. So let's address the actual question, which is to state the solution set. And we can say uh, the let me start this differently. Any ordered pair x y satisfying two x minus three y equals six is a solution to the system. Okay, this is one way to state a solution set. If you wanted to, you could be more formal about all this, and you could also say something such as this solution set equals 
make a set here and it's a set of all x y such that 2x minus 3y equals 6 you might see something like that you could state this as well but I'll leave the, uh, the first one as the one that is circled with the prominent cloud that's fine now is, is this a surprise this what we have going on here in part C okay we check things over and we think back to our out our graphic approximation our graphic approximation when we drew the graph of the intersection we found uh, two coincident lines so the solution set was an entire line of points and algebraically we have arrived at the same conclusion okay so as our check here goes both the graphic approximation and the algebraic solution conclude that the solution set is all points on the line 2x minus 3y equals 6. Thus, consistency between the two solutions is achieved. Okay, this looks pretty good. Exercise 4. Alright, let's take a look at this uh, system as far as being linear two variables or not. The first equation, ooh, problem right away. A 2 divided by y? Okay, divided by y is uh, not a linear term, so this can very well be a problem. And there's also this divided by x, another problem. And divided by xy, yet another problem. All right. However, sometimes a little algebraic manipulation, you can rewrite what appears to be a nonlinear equation as an equivalent linear one. Uh, you know what? Let's, let's try this. Maybe multiplying both sides by x times y will clear all the fractions and let's see what happens. All right. So this entire side by xy and this here by xy. What's the result? Multiply xy through here. Here the y's would cancel. You have 2 and x remaining. When xy multiplies by this term, the x's cancel, plus 5y remains. On the right side, xy, xy cancels, and negative 10 is left over. Look at this equation. It's in the form ax plus by equals c. It's a linear equation. Okay, you know what? This could very well be a linear system after all, kind of in disguise. The second equation here, let's see, 15 plus 5y plus 2x equals 0. Okay, that could easily be rewritten in the form ax plus by equals 0. So, let's just keep this equation as is here. And looks like uh, we're ready to respond to part A. We almost surprisingly have ourselves claiming yes. This is a linear system. Two variables. If you wanted to you could uh, maybe make this a little more clear in light of the surprise here. Instead of saying it is a linear system, two variables, which you could say, you could say this is equivalent 
to a linear system, two variables. That way it sort of shows that you had to do a little manipulation of the original first equation to expose the fact that it really is a linear system, two variables. Okay, either way, fine. Well, that means we are responsible for solving the system now. Let's go to B. It's the graphic approximation part. Okay, let's see. Let's uh, look over here. Uh, by the way, another little uh, item here. Okay, we multiplied both sides by x, y. Cleared those fractions. Rewrote this equation like this. But keep in mind, a little extra thing we should be putting here on the side, and that's we still cannot have x equal to 0 nor y equal to 0, because that causes division by 0 in this original equation. We lose that information when we just write this. So off to the side, x, y cannot equal 0 would be a little better way to go about rewriting this system here. Okay, otherwise, back to graphing. Um, let's see, what kind of coordinate system should we have here? Uh, getting ready to graph this, so the solutions to this first equation, uh, for intercepts, let's see, suppose x is 0, y is negative 2, suppose y is 0, x is negative 5, alright, keep those in mind. The second equation, let's see, what if x were to be 0? Now we'd have 15 plus 5y equals 0. We could uh, have negative 5y equal 15, y equal negative 3. Okay, letting y be 0. This would give us mm, 15 equal to negative 2x, or x equal to negative 7.5. Okay, with those numbers in mind, we can get a coordinate system that should fit things. Looks like we need to get quadrants uh, 2 and 3. Uh, in other words, a fair amount of negative x-axis in our coordinate system to have everything conveniently graph. So let's do that. So I'll put this future y-axis way over to the right to make room for a lot of negative x-coordinates. Okay, scaling, one unit per tick mark. So, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, negative four. Five, six, seven, negative eight. Uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, negative four. Labeling axes, this is x axis, this will be y. Okay, now uh, let's choose a uh, contrasting color here for red. Let's graph the solutions to this uh, first equation here. Well, uh, we know it's a straight line, and getting the intercepts might be convenient. Back to x equaling 0, y is equal to negative 2. Now, getting ready to graph a point here, and I stop. Wait a minute. If I graph this point, x is equal to 0 here, which I can't have. I need to actually graph a hollow circle to show this point is actually not on the graph. It's just like a reference point for my straight line. So to do that very carefully, what I'll do is I'll, I'll draw a, well here, a nice circle. Hollow circle like that. Okay, there. Now, let's go back here and let uh, y be 0. Now we have x being negative 5. Okay, over here got to be careful again because on the, along the x-axis y is 0 and y cannot equal 0. So we are actually responsible for putting another hollow circle right here. Okay, now 
a straight line passing well through these points but making sure the points do not appear on the graph so there and careful stop there and careful stop and there okay now what about this line we've drawn this is the solutions to well you know we could uh, go here to the original equation and record that way that might make the best sense of all so here we could say this is 2 over y plus 5 over x equaling negative 10 over xy okay and now let's graph in another contrasting color the solutions to the second equation okay back here let's let uh, x be 0 we had before 15 equals negative 5y y equals negative 3 okay regular solid dot for that that's a point on the graph of the solutions to this equation let's let y be 0 now we would have well 15 equals negative 2x x equals negative 15 divided by 2 or negative 7.5 right there okay let's connect these two points this blue line is the solutions to 15 plus 5y plus 2x equals 0 okay there we are now the uh, purpose of this graph here we're trying to approximate the solutions to the system well we're approximating at points of intersection of the individual graphs and it looks like the, we have a pair of distinct parallel lines here no points of intersection there apparently are no solutions to this system okay so let's write down a few things first although we don't have to re record this uh, appears the lines are parallel and distinct okay so implication here is it appears there are no solutions to the system that's conclusive so let's get a prominent cloud around that so that someone reading our solution sees the conclusive statement clearly hmm okay well with that much in order it's time to go to part C an algebraic solution alright let's see to begin part C why don't we take advantage of that work we did to rewrite the first equation in a much simpler looking form and so we can make a starting sentence here like this the system equivalently could look like this we have this 2x plus 5y equals negative 10 x y cannot equal 0 there and we have this uh, 15 plus 5y plus 2x equals 0 sometimes people use this brace to connect things to show it's a system sometimes they don't so you've seen both in the solutions we've done here just so you're used to seeing it either way okay let's proceed uh, to solve this algebraically uh, we could probably get a nice elimination method going here let's uh, put the second equation into uh, standard form as it's called by the way 
AX plus BY equals C. Standard form. And that's a good form when you're working with systems of linear equations. So we'll rewrite the system one more time. Both equations in standard form. 2X plus 5Y equals negative 10. And let's see here. Let's keep the X's and Y's. Move the 15 over here. And put things in alphabetical order, so to speak. The variable, the X terms first the y term second and over here negative 15 okay the elimination is all ready to go here basic strategy first equation subtract the second from it okay 2x minus 2x 0 5y minus 5y 0 negative 10 minus negative 15 that's negative 10 plus 15. That's 5. Wow. Okay. 0 equals 5. No, that's not true. No matter what we choose for x and y. Okay. That being the case, we have a situation where we claim there are no solutions to this system. It's conclusive for part C, prominent cloud. Now, are we sure about this? And uh, how about the overall solution? Okay, part D, our check. Well, graphically, we thought we saw uh, a pair of parallel distinct lines with, with no points in common. Algebraically, we're finding no solutions to the system. We've got consistency between our graphic approximation and our algebraic solution. So this is actually looking uh, great, at least as far as the check goes. So here we can say both the graphic approximation and the algebraic solution concluded there are no solutions to this system. Thus, consistency between the two solutions is achieved. So, this feels right and anybody reading our solution will probably find it pretty convincing as well. Graphic and algebraic together pointed to the same conclusion. All right.